Jai Radha Madhava Kunjapi Hari
Yendra Parisankitaha Chakaratad Bado Payan 
Nirbadena Yudhirstira Prayesa Pahate Tasmin Dayendra Parisankitaha Chakaratad Vadopayan Nirbadena Yudhirstira Parisankitaha, very much afraid, considered how the boy was protected. Chakara, executed. Tadvada Upayan, various means for killing him. Nirbandena, with determination. Yudhisthira, O King Yudhisthira. Translation, my dear King Yudhisthira, this is Narada Muni speaking, when all the attempts of the demons to kill Prahlad Maharaj were futile, the king of the demons, Harani Kasipu, being most fearful, began contriving other means to kill him, 43 and 44. Hirani Kashipu could not kill his son by throwing him beneath the feet of big elephants, throwing him among huge fearful snakes, employing destructive spells, hurling him from the top of a hill, conjuring up illusionary tricks, administering poison, starving him, exposing him to severe cold, winds, fire, and water, or throwing heavy stones to crush him. When Harani Kashifu found that he could not in any way harm Prahlad, who was completely sinless, he was in great anxiety about what to do next. In verse 45, Harani Kashifu thought, I have used many ill names in chastising this boy Prahlad, and have devised many means of killing him, but despite all my endeavors, he could not be killed. Indeed, he saved himself by his own powers, without being affected in the least by these treacheries and abominable actions. Text 46. Vart manan o vidura va balo piyajana dir ayam na vishmarati me naryam sunasepa iva pravahu. Although he was very near to me and merely a child, 
He is situated in complete fearlessness. He resembles a dog's curved tail, which can never be straightened, because he never forgets my misbehavior in his connection with his master, Lord Vishnu. So the purport is real short and quite uh, on the side of the... The word suna means of a dog, and sepa means tail. The example is ordinary. However, one may try to straighten the tail of a dog. It is never straight, but always curved. Suna Sepa is also the name of the second son of Ajikarta. He was sold to Hari's Chandra, but later took shelter of Vishwamitra, Hari's Chandra's enemy, and never left his side. Hmm. So we're coming to a lot of verses with no purports. The next one is 51. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kedam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sunyavari Pasyatya Rezatarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadar Har Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare The frustration of Hanirani Kashipu, he can't exhibit his demon-like nature to a young boy who was completely five years old and completely defenseless in all sense of the word. But here is something interesting, and this is very instructive for each and every one of us, that one who takes full shelter of Krishna can never be harmed by anything material. Uh, sometimes we don't have that complete understanding and we think that there is something but Prabhupada gave the example in his own life, which was quite interesting. When he was in Calcutta, um, he uh, was there in his home with his wife, and it was in the evening time. And I believe he was a relative or a friend was over the house also. So his wife was cooking kachuris. Prabhupada likes kachuris. Another name for Prabhupada is Kachari Muki. It's a nickname that they gave him because he used to love to eat Kacharis. So if you can make Kacharis and offer it to Prabhupada, you'll get a lot of mercy. And you'll get a Kachari too. <laughs> so, but this was the same time when the, uh, the war was going on, First World War. And so the, the Germans, it was a no, this was, this was like 19 something, 1919 or 18 or sometime in the late Well, what's wrong with that? Yeah, they were bombing the. Uh, the way Prabhupada said, he says the Germans were bombing the, the, the British quarter. Well, anyway, <laughs> so much for history. <laughs> anyway, the details are superfluous to the point. <laughs> the point is that there was a bombing <laughs> in that area. And the sirens were going off, and the, and the sirens were uh, warning everyone that it's time to take shelter of the bomb shelters. So Prabhupada um, was there, and his friend, either a friend or a relative, said, Abhai, let's go to the bomb shelters. And Prabhupada didn't go. He said, no, I'm, I'm staying. You know, I want to eat kachoris. <laughs> <laughs> so, his wife was cooking, sure. 
So Prabhupada said, and he actually gives a little invitation of the bombs coming in a very, what you say, animated way. Zing, boom, zing, boom. Prabhupada's talking like this on the tape. And uh, so he said, I was seeing, and here comes Krishna in the form of a bomb. <laughs> so the point is that he was seeing everything in relationship to Krishna. And there's nothing outside of Krishna. Now, Prahlad Maharaj is the same thing. The fact that he's being tortured by his father is somehow rather being allowed by Krishna, but he under also understands that taking shelter of Krishna means complete safety, complete protection. Of course, he didn't take shelter of Krishna to get protected. He took shelter of Krishna because that was his nature. He was always thinking about Krishna. And this became absorbed in thinking about Krishna in these situations. So Prabhupada gives a nice definition of fear. It's really interesting. He says fear means two. One, two. The number two. So what does that mean? He says that there is... Uh, that there is something outside of Krishna. That means there's, uh, there's Krishna and something else. That's two. But there is nothing outside of Krishna. So therefore, fear is, you know, not, is defined as something that is, in one sense, a part of the material consciousness. And therefore, it's illusionary in one sense. In another way, a sense, it's also a uh, false sense of uh, reality. Because Krishna is the complete controller. Just like now, sometimes people are thinking, well, what's, what is Christian doing during, during this coronavirus? You know, people are dying. Is he just like, you know, he's somewhere in Vrindavan just, you know, taking it easy and he's afraid of getting coronavirus so he's not moving around? <laughs> so what is Krishna doing? But Krishna, he has his plan. But he also allows the material energy to work accordingly. And when the material energy works on those who take shelter of material energy, they get the reactions of the material energy. But those who take full shelter of the Lord in devotion, when the material energy works, or always, they're free from the effects of the material energy. It's a different energy. Uh, material energy cannot touch the spiritual energy. The spiritual energy can control the material energy, but the material energy cannot control the spiritual energy, because it's an inferior energy. It's called the Bahiranga Shakti. There's an Antaranga Shakti, which is the internal energy. But we're Tatasta Shakti, which means that we can go either towards the material or towards the spiritual. So when we remember Krishna, take shelter of Krishna, become absorbed in Krishna, we're free from the effects of the material energy. Um, and that's, that's a fact, actually. Uh, Prabhupada said, he, you know, even if, he said, if you chant Hare Krishna, if just say, he said, Prabhupada said, if you chant Hare Krishna, there's no pain. There's no pain. That's if you're actually chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> then there's no pain. So, and of course, Krishna gives the, gives the, uh, uh, understanding, kontiya pratijani hina me bhakta pranashyati, that my devotee is always, and that's one of the symptoms of surrender. Surrender means that there is only one protector. Uh, people like to arrange their life in such a way as to find protection in, in different ways, such as, you know, their guns. <laughs> I had one god brother, he was, he had a father who was a we, in America, we call these people machos. You know what a macho is? <laughs> a macho is a real, like, a tough guy. <laughs> he's just like, you know, he's not afraid of anything. <laughs> but he has his supply of rifles and pistols and <laughs> to make sure he's okay. <laughs> so, so there was one devotee, he had, his father was like that. And so at one point, the father had contracted a terminal illness and he was leaving his body. So while he was dying, uh, his mother, his, his wife was there and uh, his eyes got big and he called out to his wife, bring me my gun, bring me my gun. And then he died. <laughs> 
he was seeing the Yamadutas coming, <laughs> and he was thinking, I'm going to shoot them. <laughs> but <laughs> I can't shoot the Yamadutas because they're not on the same level as you are. <laughs> So, yeah, that was an example of a person who, th who makes, who thinks, by all of my nice arrangements, I'm protected. But then again, no one in this world is safe because the material energy is more powerful. Even the guys with the big muscles who work out in their gyms, if they get bit by a mosquito, has malaria. And <laughs> can't even see the mosquito. <laughs> or Mr. Corona comes walking into their life and says, thank you for you know, remembering me. <laughs> so in that sense, you know, even things we can't see can kill you, what to speak of <laughs> people and things you can see, you know. So this material world is padam padayadvi padanate sham, it's a dangerous place. But one who takes shelter of Krishna, remembers Krishna always, is free. Krishna actually makes some statements that I want to give everyone protection, but everyone is not taking my shelter. So how can I give them protection? They're, shel they're taking the shelter of my illusionary energy and looking for protection there in whatever arrangements they make with their friends, family members, and whatever paraphernalia they have. So that is the... But a devotee knows that there, nothing can happen to them if they take full protection. Krishna. And there was so many examples in our society of devotees who have been in very dangerous, dangerous situations. The recent war in uh, between Ukraine and Russia. Uh, the, the Russians had captured this one Ukrainian devotee who was one of the leaders in the devotees. He was about to pull the trigger. And the devotee was thinking of Radharani. <laughs> Naranjan Swami told me this story. He was thinking of Radharani, and then he had some, uh, his friend came up to him and said, come on, don't waste your bullet on him. Let's, we got something else to do. And I don't tell you what they were going to do because it's not something I want to talk about in class. But, you know, somehow or other, you know, the guy said, all right. So he put the gun down and went with his friend. You know. So, because he was thinking of Radharani, really absorbed in thinking of Srimati Radharani. Devotees in uh, 1972, maybe, or three, during the Bangladesh War, Prabhupada had sent some of his devotees to preach in Bangladesh. Uh, it was Gargamuni and uh, Ramananda, his brother, yeah. They were there, and it was quite dangerous, and people were telling him, you know, you can't stay here, it's going to be, you know, your lives are at stake. Prabhupada was also worried about them and sending letters, but there was no response. Prabhupada was praying for them. And at one point, they decided to leave, and there were buses that were getting out of the country and allowing, you know, pilgrims to leave, or you might say refugees to leave. And uh, they got on the bus, but when they got to the border, the, uh, the Islamic army stopped them in, on the border and took everybody off the bus who they thought was, you know, dissidents, or, you know, people who were against them. And so they saw these two sadhus and put them up in front of the firing squad. So they're there. And finally, Brahmananda, he starts thinking, oh, well, he turns to Gargamuni and says, hey, we're going back to Godhead. <laughs> starts waving his beads in the air and starts chanting really loud until so, you know, his brother gets the signal. So they're both really chanting loud and enthusiastically, of course. <laughs> and then the army, somehow or other, I don't know what happened, but things changed. And they just changed their mind and they said, all right, get out of here, get back on the bus and go. <laughs> and let him go. So, yeah, so these are, what we see in the Shastras is not something that is just some nice example of how the Lord works. It it's actually it happens today. If one is seriously taking shelter of Krishna and devotion, and that's the mercy of the Lord. And so, and one who takes shelter of Srila Prabhupada also. Prabhupada, one devotee said to Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I, I have so many obstacles in my devotional service. Prabhupada said, you come to my lotus feet, I kick out all your obstacles. In other words, 
one who seriously takes shelter, and this is the point, we have to seriously really take shelter and call out for mercy. You're protected from anything material and also you're purified from whatever difficulties you're in. And Krishna somehow or other shows his mercy in that way. Because that's what Krishna's waiting for. He's waiting for us to really surrender to him and not to surrender to our own plans. We have so many plans how to become Krishna conscious. I mean, that's nice. And that's also what we say, uh, normal, jai panchatattva ki jai. But the real plan is actually to take shelter of Krishna in devotion and pray for Krishna in everything we do and depend on Krishna and depend on Srila Prabhupada. A devotee may have so many abilities and so many talents, but they also understand that these are given to us by Krishna. And these are the things that doesn't make my devotional service successful. My dependence on Krishna and my affection and attraction for Krishna is the success of devotional service. So anybody can do that. You know, it doesn't matter what position you are in Krishna consciousness. We sincerely call out to Krishna and depend on Krishna in each and every circumstance. Depending on Krishna means remembering Krishna. That's what it really means, to try to remember Krishna as much as possible. We, have, we take darshan of the, the Lord. What is that darshan? That darshan is an impression on the mind that we can keep with us throughout the day. And that, that, that impression is a way we can remember the transcendental form of the Lord, which we took darshan that morning. So that's one of the reasons why we, we, the deity appears to us, just to re help us remember him in his transcendental form. And of course, to serve him also. So Prahlad Maharaj, he's fearless. He has not the slightest bit of fear. Why? Because he's completely absorbed. He's actually in samadhi. Later on, you will hear about how Prahlad actually comes to the stage of samadhi when Harani Kashipu actually was going to kill him personally when he took out the sword when just at the time when uh, Lord Nishringadev had appeared, just before then. How Prahlad was just completely absorbed in the Lord. So we can practice that. And that is Krishna consciousness. Because consciousness is when we say transformed by sound and by impressions. So if we keep the sound of the holy name in our consciousness and the impressions of the Lord's form in our mind, in one form or another, gradually consciousness is, is being transformed. It's actually not being transformed, it's being reverted back to its original state. That's actually a, a better way. Because naturally we are Krishna conscious. So by, but because of our association with matter, we have developed what is called a conditioned nature, which appears to be our nature. You know, you ask somebody, well, who you are, they'll tell you the name, you ask them where they're from, they'll tell you there's, you know, that. Everybody identifies their identity according to where, what kind of body they have their name, their activities, their culture, their gender, it's like that. So these things are, are actually extraneous to our real identity. We have to remember that. But to bring the consciousness of our real identity back, Prahlad Maharaj is showing us that here, here's a, a, a what we say, a, you might say a life and death situation, but he's absorbed in Krishna. And he's not even worried about what's happening him around him. In fact, he probably doesn't even know what they're doing to him. It's almost like an anesthesia. <laughs> when you're in anesthesia, you somehow you don't know what's, what people are doing to you. He's like a transcendental anesthesia. <laughs> he's so absorbed. It does, he doesn't even feel anything. He doesn't even know, you know what attempts are being made to kill him. He's simply there, absorbed in the thought of the Lord. And that is called samadhi. Well, that is trance, Prabhupada uses the word trance. So we have to practice remembering Krishna as much as possible, because as it says in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, what was it? Tadata uh, bhava bhavitaha. What was that? What's the first part of that verse? 
Yam yam yam, yam yam vapi smaram bhavam taktva ante kalevalam tam tam evaiti kongteya sadata bhava bhavitaha. This is the most crucial part of our life. Life is a preparation for death. Remember that. There's nothing here that we need to do just to prepare to get out of here. That's, that's the whole idea. We're preparing to get out of this place. I remember when I was a kid, we used to hear this song, Mazang sung on the radio. We gotta get out of this place. It's the last thing we ever do. And it's really a very transcendental song because <laughs> I mean, why do I want to stay in this place? You know, it's 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 just full of uncertainty. You know, and I, I this, nobody expected this epidemic that's going on. Nobody knows when it's going to end. And even if it's nice here and everything is going on like, you know, the day-to-day -day life, still there's so many da dangers and difficulties, you know. It's just a dangerous place. The fact that we're okay means we're being protected by Krishna. Every one of us, every minute, because we're devotees, we're being protected by Krishna. As soon as you give up that protection, you'll see something different. <laughs> but don't do it. <laughs> don't try to make an experiment. <laughs> Krishna is protecting his devotees because that's his love for his devotees. And he wants his devotees to serve him, so he makes all arrangements so they can serve nicely. Krishna does everything. Everything. We don't do nothing. All we can do is desire, and by our desire we put things in motion. And when we put things in motion, start to something had the material energy moves according to Krishna's sanction by allowing us to perform our activities accordingly. Krishna does everything. When you know that, then you realize there's nothing but Krishna. And Krishna consciousness is the only, what we say, focus in life. And even if we can't do anything, if we can remember Krishna, that's fine. Of course, we can do something. But here, Pallad Maharaj, what is, what is his forte? He preaches to his classmates. Not only does he put himself, his, he talks to his father and defies all his father's you know, directions, criticizes his father in a nice way, says, you're the king of the demons, <laughs> sorry about you, and he tries to instruct them. He, you, you're never going to become Krishna conscious because you're just a mudha. You're a fool. You know? <laughs> but, you know, because you're my father, I love you and I want to, <laughs> you know. So Pallad Maharaj, he's, he's, he's a gentle soul. He's not someone who is like amimical towards what's being happening to him. And he takes a chance. He preaches to his classmates, knowing that he can become all more and more in trouble for doing that with his father and with his teachers. He's fearless, completely fearless. Of course, we shouldn't act on that platform unless you are on that platform. So you can act on the level of your realizations. But sometimes we go a little bit farther just to take shelter of Krishna in some difficult setting. Because we can't imitate great souls. You know? Because if you try to do that, like Prabhupada said, don't try to throw yourself in a pot of boiling oil and think that Krishna is going to be there <laughs> to protect you. So, but he said, it is available, that type of protection is available when we attain the same state of consciousness as Sri Pallada Maharaj. But according to our level of practice, we should understand that we are protected by Krishna. Like that. We are we're protected. A level of consciousness, I would say. But we can always increase like that. We can always increase. So what is the what is the formula? Krishna says, in all situations just depend on me. Sometimes we want to do that, but we forget, right? We want to depend on Krishna, but we forget. But that's, that's a matter of practice. 
It's a matter of practicing the depending on Krishna in each and every circumstance. And that takes, you know, that takes some determination because of our conditioned nature. We're conditioned to forget Krishna. We're conditioned to think that by my activities everything is happening. In other words, we see ourselves as the force behind everything we do. But only by our desire are we moving. And as soon as we move, our desire, our desire moves certain things in a certain way. And Krishna facilitates that either directly when we take shelter of him in, spirit, in devotional activities or indirectly for those who take shelter of the, not, uh, the material energy. The karmis are completely under the control of Krishna. They don't even, sometimes they even know who Krishna is or don't even, some of them don't even believe that God exists. But still, they're controlled by a person they don't believe in. <laughs> I don't believe in you, but you're controlled by that same person. <laughs> so yeah, so this is Krishna consciousness. There, so a devotee, actually it mentions in the 16th chapter of the first, third, the first, second, and third verse, that one of the qualities is fearlessness, but not foolishness. Don't try to tempt Krishna by becoming foolishly fearful, fearless just to see how he will protect you. Don't try that. <laughs> but go on in your devotional service and know that there's nothing to worry about. Krishna's always there. Just like we're out on Sankirtan. And it's dangerous out there. You never know. There are some crazy people. Uh, of course, you know, I get Prahlad Maharaj can also testify in America. That was, we were attacked so many times so many times by people while we were on Sankirtan. There was that situation, I, I can't remember, with Indrajumna Maharaj many years ago. I think they were doing Harinam in Palestine or some... Bosnia. Man, huh? In Bosnia, yeah. A bunch of... In Bosnia, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Just right. down the street, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they got attacked by a, a group of Islamic fundamentalists. A huge fight. And, Tremendous fight, and some devotees got hurt, but but in, in, in the long run, Krishna protected him. So yeah, so this is a dangerous place, padam padam yad vi padam. But therefore, a devotee knows, just take shelter of Krishna. I'm making that the point of this whole class because this is what Prahlad Maharaj is teaching us that. Uh, Rake Krishna Morike, Mori Krishna Rake K. <laughs> if Krishna wants to kill you, you're dead. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. And if you if Krishna wants to protect you, nobody can harm you. Harm you. This in this example here is the illustration of the epitome of perfection showing that if Krishna's protecting him, his power, father was so powerful, all the devas practically if he would raise his eyebrows in a very snickering type of you know, gesture, all the devas would run from their abodes. He, he caused so much fear in the hearts of the demigods because they're sakama bhaktas. They're not akama bhaktas. They have material desires yet. Although they're very powerful and they're also devotees. But still, they have material desires. But Pallad Maharaj, I mean, you'll see afterwards when Maharani Pashipu appears and kills the demon, how the demigods glorified Prahlad Maharaj. How much they glorified Prahlad Maharaj's bhakti. They're amazed to see such devotion in such a young child. I mean, Indra himself, when Narada Muni told uh, Indra, that in the womb of the wife of Harani Kasipu is a great devotee, he circumambulated his wife just to show respect, even though he wasn't even born at the time. But they're not like that. They're fearful. That's why they were capturing the wife of Harani Kasipu, because they thought the child was going to be a future demon. They're, fe they're fearful. But still, but Pallad Maharaj is not fearful. Because he knows 
that Krishna is there. Okay, so any questions, comments? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, thank you very much for a very nice class first. Uh, I wonder, maybe if you can elaborate a little bit more about, uh, you said that uh, life is preparation for, for death. For death. Yeah. And also, I wonder, like, you know, what if in the last hours before that uh, you become unconscious? You become unconscious? Like a devotee, like... Uh, well, if you give your life to Krishna, and then at the time of death, well, Prabhupada gave, them, gave another example where one Sankirtan girl, she was devoted to doing books practically her whole time she was in Krishna consciousness. She asked Srila Prabhupada, you know, Srila Prabhupada, we're out on books, and somehow or other, if while we were distributing books, you know, death comes along, and we forget the Lord, what will happen? Or we can't remember the Lord. Prabhupada said, uh, Lord Chaitanya will force himself into your consciousness. <laughs> that was Prabhupada. Of course, she was out there doing books. Prabhupada said that. But the idea is that it, if you're a devotee your whole life, you think Krishna is going to neglect you at the time of death because you're in that state. Krishna is not ungrateful. And he's not what we say, what they call it, uh, a mechanical way of I mean, Krishna consciousness is not me. It's performed in a certain way, but it's not mechanical. It's a relationship between the Lord and His devotee, which is very personal and very devotional. So somehow or other, if the devotee has you know become a devotee his whole life, and then now death comes, and he can't remember, you think Krishna is going to think, well, he blew it at the last minute. <laughs> Krishna is not like that. He's very, he's, he's a loving person. So he'll do whatever he can to somehow or other bring his devotee back to him. But the idea is that you have to practice now for remembering Krishna so you could be ready to remember Krishna at the time of death. We often say, you know, you can't think, well, like my whole life, I'll just do everything, and then at the time of death, I got the secret, and I'll just remember Krishna, and I got it. <laughs> no, Krishna's not like that either. <laughs> so, you know, if you give your life to Krishna, or if you're spending your time in devotional service, Krishna will never forget you. But if you're doing everything and then thinking at the last minute, I got the solution. <laughs> Krishna's not like that. You can't cheat him and think, you know, I have some formula. So, yeah. So we can also say that when great souls, for somehow or rather, leave the world, and they're in the state of what we say, when we say coma or unconsciousness, Krishna's there with them every moment. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Hi, right, Krishna Maharaj. Um, thank you for the wonderful lecture. Um, my question is: Was it clear for Hiranya Kashipu, like the first time he tried to kill Prahlad, that it was actually the protection of Lord Vishnu, or did he could he even think this is because he's in the family line of demons, so he's such a power, powerful demon, like, like his father. He says it here. I think he says here. Well, he says, Rani Kashi felt that he couldn't know. Well, he says, okay. He says, and he's talking, this is the verse, he resembles a dog's curved tail which can never be straightened. Because he never forgets my misbehavior and his connection with his master, Lord Vishnu. So Harani Kashipu could, could understand he never, that Pallad was remembering his master Vishnu. So he even knew that. But he, but he saw Vishnu as his enemy. 
But he knew Vishnu was powerful because Vishnu had killed his brother, <laughs> Niranyaksha. And that's one of the reasons why he hated Vishnu, because he wanted to get revenge for his brother's death. <laughs> but he knew, you know, he knew Vishnu was very powerful. And that's what he said to Prahlad. He said, you're taking shelter of my enemy. And Prahlad said, my dear father, your only enemy is your own mind. <laughs> so, yeah, he understood that. You know, he, he was taking shelter of Vishnu. But he still thought he was more powerful than Vishnu. That's why he keeps going. He's still trying to figure out ways to, you know, harm Prahlad. And then if you, uh, this is Maharaj's verse. <clears throat> he, I'll just read it because there's no purpose. I can see that this boy's strength is unlimited for he has not feared any of my punishments. He appears to be immortal. Therefore, because of my enmity towards him, I shall die. Or maybe this will not take place. This is the next verse. I shall die, but maybe not. So, in other words, he's so bewildered by what's happening that he's thinking, maybe I'll die, maybe I won't die. His mind is disturbed. Yeah, so. Okay, so, should we stop here? Anything else? You have any questions? No questions today? Yeah, I always thought you always have to have one question. Okay, thank you. That's important. I like when you ask questions. You always ask good questions. Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna gives us instructions on how to control the mind. Mm. But in other places, he in Bhagavatam it said that uh, he is ultimate that he is final ultimate controller of the mind. Mishikesha, mm -hmm. it's his name. Yeah, when well, he controls the mind and senses. Yeah. And uh, how, how how it works? Uh, does he does uh, should we rely? I mean, we should rely on vairagya and uh, practice. Well, the thing is, if you want to control the mind, you make the effort to control the mind, but by Krishna's mercy, you become successful. But if you don't want to control the mind, then even Krishna's mercy can't help you because he's, he's allowing you that kind of independence. But vairagya, detachment, it says that, you know, what is it? Um, Knowledge leads to austerity. Austerity leads to detachment. Detachment leads ultimately to bhakti or attachment for Krishna. <clears throat> so yeah, by performing austerities, we get detached from you know those things which are causing our mind to be disturbed. Like that. So there is recommended austerities the four regulative principles, and of course there's other austerities, like on a codice, we don't take grains or beans like that. You can even increase that austerity. So they say austerity is the wealth of the Brahmin class. In other words, austerity is really much desired by those who are practicing Krishna consciousness. Because it detaches them and it also awakens their attachment for Krishna. Yeah. So we have to practice the recommended austerities like that and not create our own ones. Does that help? Okay. All right. Thank you. Did you have a question too? Okay. Okay. Hare Krishna. Uh, I just want to make sure if I understand correctly, if we are we have any kind of fear, does that mean that uh, we are in illusion? Well, there is there's Prabhupada said you should have a healthy fear of Maya. 
he said, that fear is recommended, that I'm afraid to fall into the material energy. Therefore, one will be careful to do those things which not, will, will not cause one, or to avoid those things which will cause one to fall into maya. So Prabhupada said, that fear is called the healthy fear. So that fear is recommended. Sometimes we say, fools rush in where angels dare to thread, tread. <laughs> so, yeah. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Sri Pancha Tattva ki jai.